Hey guys, thanks for coming back. Today I'm going to be working on reassembling the front end of my car. Uh, I'm going to be using the five lug SN95 parts that we've been gathering. Uh, I'm going to start off by bolting up the lower control arm to the car. So I'm just going to stick the bolts through it right now. we are so while I'm on the subject of control arms let me tell you guys the story of what happened so the last video that I made I told you I was gonna go and uh, get the bushings pressed in so I did I took it to the machine shop but they wanted to charge me uh, $40 to press each bushing and also the ball joint so the grand total was gonna come out to uh, around a hundred and twenty dollars or something like that so uh, that was ridiculous, you know, that's monkey work. What I ended up doing is I uh, ran in a press model zone and I pressed the ball joints myself. I burned out the old bushings and I used the polyurethane uh, stuff. That way I wouldn't have to get the, the metal casing pressed in. Anyway, so now it's good to go. All right, so now that I have the control arm bolt it back in place and I already tightened the bolts the next step is to put the spring back on um, however if you're doing this I hope that you already have a nice set of aftermarket springs uh, and shocks uh, ready to go because the OEM stuff is a pain in the butt to try to put back on it's almost impossible to do it especially if you're using the GT springs or the V8 springs so these are four cylinder springs they're a little bit uh, shorter but they're still almost impossible to get on. What I'm gonna end up doing is, since it's just temporary, I'm gonna go ahead and cut one of the rings off and that'll allow me to uh, bolt it back up so that I can uh, roll the car back and forth. And that's gonna be temporary until I choose the final setup and I'll go ahead and install that. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this. All right, so I went ahead and cut the spring. As I told you, I removed one of the coils basically this is how it was and I just went straight down and then cut off that piece all right so now we're going to install it all right so to install the spring uh, clock the spring so that the very last coil lines up with the mark on the control arm okay and then you're gonna start by putting the top of the spring on and then you're gonna push it backwards, okay? And then the last coil on the back is gonna be already uh, hooked up to the control arm but you're gonna need a pry bar or something to keep it in that place when you jack it up, right? You need to be extremely careful here. Go slow and make sure, you know, nothing is moving out of place and it's not dangerous. Pretty much there you go. We can move the pry bar now. And basically, our spring is close to installed. And that's how you put on the spring. So now I'm going to bring the uh, spindle and bolt it on. Alright, so with the jack still in place. We're going to grab our 5 lug spindle and put it into the ball joint stud and then we're going to grab the ball joint nut and tighten that to the correct specifications which I believe is uh, 60 to 90 pounds or something like that but the way that I do it is just by feel I drive it down and when it's tight I just turn it until I can fit the cotter pin in, but it doesn't have to be super tight. So I'm tighten that up. I'm starting to feel a little bit of resistance. I'm gonna stop and keep tying a little bit until 
I can stick this in. Tyrant in back up. Maybe hold it so that I can tighten this correctly. There we go. So now I'm gonna turn it just enough so that I can stick the powder pin through. Just a little more. I think that should do it. Yeah, there we go. Alright, so the ball joint is in place. It's already uh, torqued. I have the cotter pin in, in it already. I installed the, um, the tie rod end back on. What I'm going to do now is temporarily put the shock back on. Alright, so we're going to line this up. Then we're going to use the jack. To help us line up the holes. Okay. All right, so I got the shocks bolted up, so now I can remove the jack. And I don't know if you can tell, but basically have the 5 lit conversion bolted up to your car already all right so in my case like I said I don't have the correct brake lines to make the setup work yet so I can't really uh, hook it up right now but I'm gonna mock it up anyway because I know some of you guys might want to see that okay so I'll be mocking up the brake system just for fun because why not these are the rotors that I'm gonna be using so here and the brake pads Let's see if I can fit them in here without disassembling See how close we are getting to finishing up this five lug conversion. Basically, it's gonna hand tighten because I'm gonna have to take all this stuff back off. There we are, guys. We're gonna put our PBR calipers in place. All right, so I don't know about you guys, but to me, that looks like a five look conversion right there. Let me grab the camera. Alright guys, so our main objectives are basically completed. I have the front 5 look setup bolted onto the car. Also the 8.8 on the rear. Um, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done before I can think about driving this car. Such as the master cylinder and the booster, also the brake lines. I believe I'm going to have to change the rack and pinion, a sway bar and the sway bar links. I also need new shocks and springs. So. All of that is coming guys. Uh, anyway, I'm going to remove this caliper and bolt on the temporary tire so that I can roll the car back and have it there parked until I can find some time to continue. Thank you guys for watching. Please consider subscribing and take care guys.